lift up Isaiah chapter 40. I read it just a moment ago, so chapter 6, Isaiah 40, chapter 6, Isaiah 40, chapter 6. I'm going to just lift up um, two verses. Isaiah 40, chapter 6. Verse, Isaiah 40, verse 6. A voice cried out, cries, a voice says, a voice says, cry out. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. And all their faithlessness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. Because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. Verse 8 says, the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of our God endures forever. The word of our God endures forever. Your homework this week is to read all of chapter 40. Read all of chapter 40 of Isaiah. We are in the beginning of a sermon series. We preached the first sermon from that series last week. And the sermon series is entitled, This Is Your Day. This is your day. And last week we spoke on the words, this is the day that the Lord has made. And our sermon series is rooted in Psalms 118. So that is our foundational scripture for this entire series. We realize today we are peeping over into Isaiah, but Psalms 118. And in Psalms 118, verse 5, Verse 5 says something similar to what we just read in Isaiah. I don't know if you will catch the key phrases or not. But verse 5 says this. When I was hard pressed, I cried out to the Lord. This is Psalms 118. I cried out to the Lord and he brought me into a spacious place. Verse 6. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Verse 7. The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies for a little while church i want us to just continue with the theme of our sermon series this is your day this is your day but this is your day for what this is your day for what this is your day there's so many things that we can do with that but for today this is your day to cry out cry out cry out wait really pastor what do you mean we grown we've dismissed all the children what do you mean we're grown women and grown men <laughs> what do you mean cry out why do i need to cry out really pastor we don't we don't need we don't need to cry but we need to cry out to the lord today and if you're not crying out for your sake then we need to cry out for others because there's somebody who needs us to cry out on their behalf. Now, y'all know, if you've been with me long enough and I'm looking at the room, many of you have, there are certain things, there are certain titles, there are certain things I don't like to mess with. There are certain even titles I don't even like to preach, Sister Dixon, because I cannot preach it, I cannot experience it, I cannot preach it without living it and experiencing it. And I'm like, God, it's too much. I ain't got time to cry right now. It's too much going on. So my prayer all week, I mean, as even as getting into Sunday, I'm like, I don't want to preach this sermon. I've tried to change the title. I've tried to tweak it and turn it and do all these other things to it and come up with something else that we can deliver today. But it just kept going back to cry out, no matter how I tried to twist it. I'm like, I'm going to tune out all the guys because they don't want to hear me say cry out. But God says cry out. Cry out. When we think about crying out, I know you said, but Pastor, we are a praying church. 
So we think about crying out. Some people I say, well, well, I pray. Well, we're gonna, we're just gonna pray unto God. But when I say cry out, cry out is not the same as saying a prayer. When we say a prayer, we are praying generally. Y'all, some praying people. Most of us um, in this congregation, we get on the prayer call on Tuesdays mornings, on Thursdays mornings, and we are praying. We're praying for each other. We're praying for our community. We're praying for people we don't know. We see people. I've seen people in the store. No joke. I saw this lady in the bank. I didn't know who she was, and she knew who I was because she gone online and seen the picture, but she said, I know you because your church prays for us. Your church calls my name on their prayer call. And I didn't know who she was. And she was somebody that worked with um, Evangelism Morris, but she recognized me in a bank. And she said, I wanna thank your church for praying for me. I wanna thank y'all for praying for my daughter. My daughter is doing well. I was like, I'm so glad I wasn't in there going off on a teller, like showing myself. <laughs> I'm so glad I wasn't in there acting crazy because this lady came and she came came up to me and just started talking. So I know that we are a praying church. We pray. When we pray, we intercede for other people. When we pray, we give thanks unto God. When we pray, we do prayers or petition unto God. But praying and crying out for the purposes of this message and in general, it's different. When I say the title of the sermon is cry out, cry out is an intentional phrase that differs from me just asking you to pray. Generally, when we cry out, there is a desperation and crying out hits differently from now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep cry out to cry. Cry is a spontaneous response, brother Stephen. It's a spontaneous response to an urgent need. When I cry out, it, yeah, it, it may be spontaneous. It may be something that just happened. Crying out is generally centered around an immediate specific need, an immediate and a specific need. When I pray, you know, I remember when my mom taught us to pray, we would say the Lord's Prayer, and then every night at the end of that Lord's Prayer, we had to say, Lord, bless my mama, bless my daddy, bless my sister, bless my brother, bless my grandma, bless my grandpa. You know, we had to go through this whole lot, and finally I was just like, Lord, just bless everybody in the whole world. Because I didn't want to say all those things. I'm like, why? And, and it was not like today. It was. It was a hardwood floor. But we had to be on our knees on that hard floor. And sometimes it was cold. I couldn't just lay in the bed and say my prayers. Every night, your knees had to hit the floor. And so the longer this list, and I was like, you know what? God just bless everybody in the whole world. You know, that's a little bit different from an urgent specific need. Oh, your mother has cancer. Okay, God, I need you to bless my mother right now. It's very specific. It's a cry out for that one need. Not God bless Lottie Dottie and everybody. Cry out. It's different. Crying out sometimes is motivated by the presence of danger or it's in response to a hurt or a pain. Maybe you are in a very painful relationship. Maybe you just saw your dream shatter. You thought you had married the person of your dream and turned out they're Godzilla. And you're crying out in pain or desperation. Maybe it's because you've seen heartbreaking news. And if anybody has turned on the news in these past three weeks, all the news is heartbreaking news. It's not stuff that's just happening in Israel and stuff that's happening in Gaza, but now these things are hitting closer and closer and closer to home. Just this morning, CNN breaking news of a synagogue president who was stabbed to death in her home in Detroit heartbreaking news that causes us to cry out in a response because uh, because we have a sense of desperation crying out i told um sister i told our sister sister green i said um you know what I said, I'm just going to pray that this whole sermon was just inspired by me talking to you a lot this week and, and praying for you. I hope it's not a, a, a prediction of my week to come, <laughs> but I'm praying that, you know, it, it is it is. I had you on my mind as I was um, crying out to the Lord on your behalf. And she said, I said, I did all but 
um, called your name in the sermon. This is when I was talking to her last night. She said, you can call my name. I'll be watching from the hospital bed. You can call my name in the sermon because I thought about when she found out the devastating news that her foot had to be amputated. She cried out unto the Lord. You know, God, I don't know what to do. She cried out in fear because that is a life changing surgery. I mean, anybody, everybody in here today, we all walked in here with both of our feet. It is a life changing surgery. When you have to imagine now living your life in such a matter, cry out, crying out to God. And I watched her and I saw her in a state that I've never seen before, crying out to God. But at the same time, knowing that God will still take care of her. I look at the news and I'm looking at the people in Israel and I'm crying out. For them, as as I've stood in this place, I know the distance and the proximity between the kibbutz that were that are that are that were raided and the actual Gaza Strip, the border, the walls that were that were infiltrated. I've I've stood in those places, and I know to try to make you understand it. Imagine an apartment complex or a living community where everybody's houses are just right here together. Your doors are always unlocked because you know all of your neighbors. You know everyone around you. In the center is a basketball court. And then over here is a playground. And then there's a community center. But it's just a nice housing community. But it sits right there at the border of Gaza. But everybody knows each other. And I remember in my most recent trip, one of the students, and they always ask this question. We always ask this question, why do y'all live here when there's so much danger? Why do you live here when your kids are playing basketball right here, but right beside the basketball goal is is a room that's considered a bomb shelter? So if you hear a siren, you go here. Right here are the playground. The playground is right here, and right beside the playground is a bomb shelter. Because you need to be able, as soon as you hear the siren, you have 10 seconds to go into the shelter. In every house, there is one room in every house that's a bomb room, a bomb shelter. When you hear the siren, you have to go into that room. This is, and we said, why do y'all stay here? Why do you put your children here? Your children are going through all this trauma. Why are you still here? And they look at us every time and they say, where are we going to go? The children of Israel, Isaiah 40, Isaiah chapter 40 that we read earlier, they've they've always had to fight for land. They've always had to fight for a place that God has said was going to be going to be there. So I cry out for those people who just has people to infiltrate their area. But we also have to cry out for Gaza. We have to cry out for the Palestinian people. Two thirds of that population is under the age of 25. Who's in here under 25? Two-thirds of that population is under the age of 25. So as bombs and rockets are going into this area, they're killing who? Children under the age of 25. We got to cry out for Ukraine, but we got to cry out for the U.S. We got to cry out for our own children who are walking in communities and walking down the streets, killing one another. They can't go to a homecoming game. They can't go to a prom. They can't go to a dance. They can't even sit outside the students in their own community without somebody coming up, killing them. We got to cry out to the Lord. When I'm praying, I'm not always fearful when I pray. Again, it may be a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of petition. But generally when we cry out, when I saw the sister on her hospital bed crying out, that cry that she cried was accompanied by fear. Have you ever had to cry out to the Lord and know that there was, at the end of that, there was a fear? There was a reason why your voice sounded the way it sounded. When we cry out in our crises, it's because we feel helpless and we feel hopeless. I mean, what really can you do if the doctor says your child has cancer? What can you physically do? You feel helpless and you feel hopeless. But in that moment, we also church should recognize God's supernatural power 
in our crisis. Amen. We should recognize God's supernatural power in our crisis. When I cry out, I cry out with the confidence knowing that God can help. Does anybody know that God can help your situation? When I cry out, I cry out with the confidence. See, I'm not just crying just to be crying out. That's going to get old after a while. We're not just crying just to be crying out. We're crying out, but we have to believe that when we cry out that God can help us and God can deliver us. And that's why I said you got to read all of Isaiah 40 because God doesn't just leave them there. It doesn't just start with comfort, ye my people, but there's something that happens at the end. So when we cry out, church, do you really believe that God can bring you out of the situation? Do you really believe that God can deliver us? How much time will we spend focusing on the crying out unto God that we or or versus the time that we spend believing that God can deliver? Cry out. But after you cry out, know that God will deliver you. Know that God will take care of you. Cry, but don't stay there. He will Know that God has the ability to pick you up. Know that God has ability to help you and to deliver you in your situation. Tell your neighbor, don't get stuck in your tears. Tell somebody, don't get stuck in your tears. Don't get stuck in your tears. Don't get stuck in your anger. A lot of times we cry out to God in anger and frustration, and we ask that that powerful, powerful, powerful question. I'm going to call it powerful today. We ask that question. It's just three little words. But I see it right now. When we're going through, when things hit us, we ask that one question. Sister Penny didn't ask that question. If you watch the Bible study, she said she didn't ask that question. She didn't ask that question when when she was hit with cancer, two types of cancer, when she was going through her cancer. But most of us ask that one question. And what's the question? Why? W-H-Y. Why? Why am I going through this? Why do they have to kill my family? Why do they have to kidnap my family member? Why am I going through that? We ask that one question, but and we're crying out and we're angry and we're mad and we're frustrated and we're scared. But don't get stuck in your tears because I know a deliverer and you know a deliverer and you have to know that the Lord will deliver you. Do y'all know that today? It doesn't resonate and it doesn't seem like it when you're going through it. But the Lord will deliver you. The Lord, take the look at the Bible. He's delivered over and over and over again. God delivered the disciples. The disciples cried out. And God delivered the disciples. Amen? Where are we? Mark chapter 4. Are you there? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. You know it. You don't even have to turn to it. What happened in Mark chapter 4? Jesus was asleep. Jesus was asleep on the ship. Was it a ship or a boat? I don't know. Was it a ship? Jesus was asleep. Just making sure y'all not asleep. Jesus was asleep. And what did the disciples do? I say they cried out. They cried out. What did they say? What did they say, Bible scholars? What did they say? They cried out. Master. Carest thou not that we perish? You don't care. You don't see this boat rocking. You don't see all this stuff going on. Y'all know they know how to swim, right? They ain't know how to swim. <laughs> like, like, why would you be carrying on like that? They didn't know how to swim. Like, they're like, you don't see this boat rocking, all this stuff that's going on. He said, carest thou not that we perish? And Jesus rose and he did what? He rebuked the wind. And he said unto the sea, what? Peace. Peace be still. Why are you fearful? Do you not have any faith? Peace be still. Church, I want to tell you that God has the ability to speak to your situation and tell peace to be still. God has the ability to calm the storm that is going on in your life right now. If only you trust him, if only you believe him. In the book of Exodus, in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, the disciples cried out. Yes, the disciples cried out unto the Lord, but also the children of Israel cried out. They continue to cry out. They've always been crying out. But how it started is in Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. I think we have that. For those who are watching, you should see that on your screen. Exodus chapter 14, we see where the children of Israel cried out. Why did they cry out? 14 and 10. 
Because Pharaoh said, go. I'm going to let y'all go. But then the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. And many of you know the story if you've been to Sunday school. What happened? They got ready to leave and they were marching. And what did they see? They saw Pharaoh's army coming behind them. And the people cried out. In verse 10, it says, as Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked. And behold, the, Israel, the, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel did what? Cried out. They cried out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. I want y'all to, I want this Bible to come alive to y'all right now. As y'all watching CNN and Fox News and all these things, where are the people standing right now? Where are they trying to get into, but they can't get into? Where are they trying to get into, but they can't get into? The people who are leaving Gaza, where are they trying to go, but they can't get in? No, no, no. Where are they trying to go? Egypt. They're trying. Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's army. Where's Pharaoh's? Pharaoh's, behold, the Egyptians were marching out of them. Y'all know Caleb loved looking at these maps. So we look at the maps all the time. He loved these and, and because I've been there. So, so Israel, it's just this narrow area. To the right of Israel, if you will, or to this side of Israel, where there's land, is the West Bank, what Brother Paul was talking about. And the Gaza Strip is literally a strip. It's literally just a little area down the side of Israel. That's the Gaza Strip. To the south of the Gaza Strip <coughs> is Egypt. To the side of the Gaza Strip is Israel. To the other side of the Gaza Strip is the Mediterranean Sea. So you got water. So Israel goes around like a hook. Israel is to the north of the Gaza Strip. Israel is on this side of the Gaza Strip, the right side. At the bottom tip is Egypt, and then you got the Mediterranean Sea. Look at how history is, is working. We were trying to come out of Egypt to go into this land that God promised to us. We're going out of Egypt. Now they're saying, can you open this border so that these trucks with this aid can come in and help these people? Or can you let some of these people out of Gaza into Egypt? It, it, it all, we're not getting into that, but it all, it all works together, y'all. The children of Israel, they were coming out of Egypt into the land that God had promised them. They're going to the land that God has promised them. And they're crying out because there is water on this side <laughs> and Pharaoh's army is behind them there's water in front of them so what do they do they cry out to the Lord I want you to see that even when you don't even see how the Lord will make a way who builds a highway in the middle of the water even when you don't think that the Lord will make a way the Lord is always making a way for us the Lord is always looking out for us the Lord always steps in on time maybe he hasn't done it for y'all since nobody said amen but the Lord always steps in on time the children of Israel, that's just one example. But over and over and over again, we see where he delivered the children of Israel because they cried out to him. David, Lord knows King David, Brother Paul, cried out over and over and over again. Two of my favorites, Psalm 61 and Psalm 34. Psalm 61, David cries out when he's being chased by the king, by another king, by, because he's, he's in charge of this army. David cries out and he says, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you, and I call as my heart grows faint. faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against my foe. I tell y'all, every time y'all see this, this rock, this symbolism of rock in the Old Testament, it is a form of Christ. Lead me to the rock, and I can't get away from my rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock. David is saying, I can't do this on my own. He's crying out unto the Lord. 
in Psalms 34, he is crying out unto the Lord. And, and I may have spoken and I meant to say this with Psalms 34, when he's being pursued, when he's being chased, he is still saying, you know what? I'll bless the Lord. Y'all quote Psalms 34 all the time. But outside of blessing the Lord, this is a cry of desperation. Literally, he's being hunted down. So even in the midst of our trials, even in the midst of his tribulations, he's saying, I will bless the Lord at all. Brother Ron, he said, I ain't sleep on them drums. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Continuously, no matter what I'm going through, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon me and they were light and their faces were not ashamed. But look at verse six. We usually stop reading by that time. But look at verse six. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. I sit and I listen to story after story after story of crisis after crisis after crisis that so many of you are going through. So many of your loved ones, your friends, your family that you're going through. And I think about this verse, this poor man cried. Could be a man, a woman, a boy, a girl. This poor man cried, but you got to know that the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The children of Israel cried out. The disciples cried out. David cried out. But it didn't stop there. The fact that Jesus cried out lets me know that I shouldn't be ashamed to cry out. I was, I was so, I was so whatever about this whole message about crying out and want to be, make sure we give a message that speaks to everybody in the congregation, to the men, the women, the boys and the girls. And I was like, "Mm, crying out that don't really resonate with a man. But every example that we've given has been a man crying out to God. Even in Israel, it was the children of Israel that was coming out. But when you read the text in Exodus, it says the sons of Israel cried out. Men, it's all right to cry out. This is not a, this is not a, this is not a gender specific. This is not all just the women cry and wail and lament. No, we are crying out unto God because we need the Lord to hear our cry. We need the Lord to hear the sense of urgency that is going on in our life. And I've listened to your stories. I've heard your, I've seen your tears. I've heard your wailing. And my heart aches for you because I know what you have conveyed to me that you are going through. And I can't even say that the the things that you've been bringing, the things that I've been praying, I can't even say in any of these situations, I know how you feel because I don't. That would be a lie. And so often we go to people and we say, oh, I know how you feel. No, you really don't. We have two individuals that I know of in this congregation, both who are in here today, both who experience breast cancer, but even their situations and the circumstances around their cancers were unique. So they still can't say to each other, I know exactly how you feel. I don't know exactly how you feel. They don't know exactly how each other feel. There's going to be things that they can resonate with with one another. But to say, I know exactly how you feel. Oh, you lost your mother. I lost my mother. I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, you don't. Everyone's cry is different. That's why we all have to cry out. That's why we all have to cry out. But even Jesus, Jesus cried out. Jesus cried out. Matthew 27, 46. If you're watching online, you should see it there. Matthew 27, 46. What did Jesus cry out? What did he say? He cried out in the ninth hour. Jesus was on the cross and he did what? He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which says, my God, my God, why has 
thou forsaken me? Matthew specifically said, Jesus cried out. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I know right now there are people who feel like God has forsaken you. God has left you in a predicament, in a situation that you don't know how you're going to get out of. God has left you in a predicament. He's left you in a situation and you can't see your way through. God has you in a predicament, but God did not leave Jesus. And God has not left us. Because you know how this story ends. Do you not know how the story ends? Anybody in here raise your hand? You don't know how this story ends? Even though Jesus cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The story didn't end that way. He got up. With all power in his hands, he got up. So you know what, church, even after having life-altering surgery, God is saying, you have to get up. Even after having your hopes and your dreams shattered, God is saying, you got to get up. Even after your marriage didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out, you got to, you got to what? You got to give up. Even, I think everybody, almost every college, all the significant ones had homecoming yesterday. Benedict College, Clark, Atlanta, Fort Valley, Savannah State. There were so many homecoming. I know y'all had y'all shit. I said significant idea. All the age, all the South Carolina State people looked at me like they were about to jump me right now, y'all. There's so many South Carolina State people in here. All these colleges have homecoming. When you go to your homecoming, when you go back home and you see people, you know, maybe your life didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out. High school homecoming, Denmark, Ola, Keenan, Eau Claire. I went to my homecoming from high school. And you look and you see people and you think, this is not how I planned it. This is not how I thought I would be 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later. But you got to know that even in the midst of it all, God said, you can cry out to me and my word will never fail. We're going to end it like we started it. We started in Isaiah 40. Verse 6, Isaiah 40, verse 6, the Lord says, cry out. And then the Lord says, then they said, what shall I cry? What should I cry? In verse 8 says, this is what you cry. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. When we cry out, church, the only thing we got to rely on is the word of the Lord. There is nothing else that can compare. There's nothing else that we have to stand on. We cry out knowing that God, that we already have the victory. That's what God's words tell us. Does not God's word not tell us that? Does God's word not tell us that we already have the victory? We cry out knowing that God will do what? God will heal and he shall deliver. God will heal and he shall deliver. We cry out knowing that God will do what? All we got y'all is to fall back on his word. So what does the word says? The word says that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. That's what the word tells us. We cry out knowing that, that God shall supply all of my needs. According to his riches and glories, everybody stand. Everybody stand. I need you to just yell out, cry out. I just need you to say, I just need you to say, cry out. Just say, cry out. That's all. One, two, three. 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 We got to cry out, church. Why are we crying out? We got to cry out because the word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So I need you to do what? When I release my hand, you got to say cry out. We got to cry out because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So we got to, come on, church, we got to, we got to do what? We got to cry out because God was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Are we not healed? We are healed. Any healed folks in here today? We are healed. We are healed. We got healed. We got to do what? We got to do what? We got to cry out because God is with us. We got to cry out because God says in his word that he will strengthen us and he will uphold us with the righteousness of his right hand. We got to do what? 
to Adrian, you got a homework assignment because my baby is left-handed. And he's like, why is it always the right hand? Why is the right hand the right hand of power? Why is the right hand? Why is God always talking about the right hand? He's like, I'm left-handed. But we got to cry out because we got to know that his right hand of righteousness uphold us. We got to do what, church? Because God said he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on him. We got to... Because the Lord is our refuge, our strength, our very present help in the time of trouble. We got to, because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it and are saved. We got to, because the Lord is our shepherd and we don't have to want for anything. We got to, because the Lord is our light and our salvation, whom shall we fear? We got to, because the Lord is the strength of our life, of whom shall we be afraid? We got to. Because they that wait upon the Lord. That's how the 40th chapter of Isaiah ends. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings, as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We got to, we got to, we got to, we got to, because this, is the day that's our foundational scripture for this whole series this is the day that the lord has made and we shall do what we shall rejoice this is the day that the lord has made and we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it no matter what you've gone through the lord will deliver you and the lord will take care of you I look at Isaiah chapter 42 and I look at Isaiah chapter 8 and we talk about crying out. (laughs) But when I look in those verses, we've talked about our, our way of crying out. But then I look, Sister Alicia, and I saw something that caused me to do a little bit more research. We can cry out unto the Lord, but also we see that when God spoke and God said that he was going to deliver, when the people got ready to go into battle, almost any battle, there was a war cry. We've said cry out, but there was a war cry. And one of the most infamous ones that you'll probably remember is same people, children of Israel. Children of Israel, go to your book, the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter. The children of Israel were getting ready to fight their first battle, their first battle, to possess this this land, this promised land, this Canaan land. There was a first battle that they had to fight. Who did they fight in the first battle? Bible scholars, if I tell you, if I just say it, y'all know, y'all know. My kids said, oh, there was a VeggieTales story about that. Who did they fight in the first battle? The first battle, the first group of people they had to fight, they had to annihilate, was Jericho. Oh, Alicia singing the song now. Teach it to the kids. Joshua in the battle of Jericho. That was the first battle that they had to cry. That was the first symbol of a war cry. What happened? God told them to go around the city. One time. They're like, how are we going to get in here? How are we going to do this? He said, go around the city one time. Six days, go around it one time. But on the seventh day, go around how many times? Seven times. And the last time that you go around, he said, I want the trumpets to sound. And I want everybody to let out a loud shout, roar, cry. That was the war cry symbolizing, you know what? God already said, you got the victory. You got the victory. So I want you to go in here knowing that you got the victory. After they did that, at the seventh time, what happened? Say it loud. Say it loud. The walls came down. We got to know after we've cried out that God has already given us the victory. And so we got to let out the 
of Warcraft. Do y'all believe God has given y'all the victory? Do y'all believe God has given y'all the victory? Oh, some of y'all don't believe it. Do you believe that you've already said I got to cry out? And you know, think about your friends. Think about your loved ones. Think about your own life. Think about your job. Think about people that we know we need God to move on their behalf. God is saying, I've already given you the victory. But as a sign of that victory, see, the walls didn't just come down. When did the wall come down? As soon as they sounded their trumpet, as soon as they all shouted, that's when the walls fell down. So we need some walls to fall today, church. Anybody other than me need some walls to fall today? I've been praying. I've been fasting. You've been praying. You've been fasting. Now God is saying we need to come together on one accord and we need to cry out so the walls can come tumbling down. Are you ready to cry out today, church? Are you ready to cry out today, church? Are you ready? doctor just had another appointment with the ENT as we can't figure out why this stuff 
just fluid keeps oozing from his ear and the specialist told us that he has inflammation in his left ear. They can't figure out the reason the inflammation is in his ear. So they had to take a sample and we'll go back in another week and try to figure it out. But it's so interesting that he's having these gastrointestinal issues and these ear issues just out of nowhere. We're helpless, hopeless, can't do anything but keep following up and advocating for his health. But one thing that he does almost every day, he watches a particular sermon. And he's been watching this sermon the whole time that he's been going through this. I would like to say it's one of mine, but it's not. But it's a, a, a Reverend Marcus Crosby. And I don't know if he likes this guy because his name is Marcus, Brother James. But he watches this sermon. And in this sermon, this pastor is talking about his son, who's 12, who was 12 years old at the time he did the sermon, Marcus and Linda. And his son had this constant ear situation going on. And not only was his, his ear situation was so bad that it was causing the little boy's head to hurt. And I remember one Tuesday night, Mark, who never cries out, cried out at the kitchen table. He was like, my head is hurting. My head is hurting. When it wasn't his head at all, it was actually his ears when I first discovered stuff coming from his ear. Mark watches this sermon every day, and, and Pastor Crosby talked about just the healing, the delivering, and all the stuff that eventually came for his son. And if you know Mark, he likes to shout, and so he rewinds, and he just fast forward till he get to the shout part, Brother Jim. And so the man is, is listening at the sermon, and he's saying how his son, one day he walked in the hospital, and his son was better. And that was a shout moment, Amen. But he said, he said to his son, son, we thank and praise God for your healing. And sometimes God does things suddenly. And the son, who was the one who was going through the situation, looked back at him and he said, but sometimes God does things eventually. And church, the message today is, whether God is doing something suddenly in your life or whether God is doing something eventually in your life, you still got to know that God is going to do it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? You still got to know, God, whether you come suddenly or whether you come eventually, God, I'm going to praise you. God, I'm going to lift your name on high. God, I'm going to magnify your holy and your righteous name. I don't have all the answers yet for my son. I don't know what's going on in his body, but I'm going to give God a praise because I know eventually this too shall pass. Eventually, this is going to be a testimony. Eventually, it won't always be like this. Eventually, God is going to turn that thing around. God is going to change your situation. Yeah, you got to go through rehab now. Yeah, some people, you have to learn how to talk again. You got to learn how to use your fingers again. You got to learn how to walk again. But it won't always. It won't always. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning you sooner or later. Sooner or later suddenly or eventually, sooner or later, it's going to work in your faith. It's going to work in your faith. I thank you, God, for working in our favor. If there's anybody who's watching online or is in this place today, and you're at a crossroads of life where you feel like you've cried out over and over and over and over again, And you're ready to do that victory dance. And you're saying, I just need to surrender it all to God. Trusting and believing that it won't always be like this. If that is you today, you say, I tried to do it my way. God, I want to accept you into my life. I invite you to come. I invite you to come to accept God as your Lord and your Savior. If you haven't done that, Maybe you've done that and you're just like, Pastor, I just need to know that God hears me. I'm here to tell you that God hears you and that God answers prayer. And maybe you are saying, I know God hears me, 
I've cried out. Now it's time to get to work. And you want to attach yourself to this body, to this church. You want this place to be your church home. I invite you to come now. I invite you to come to the altar. We will love you if you're watching online. I ask you to let us know that. I thank and I praise God. I thank and I praise God for you. Bless you. It won't always be like this. We walk by faith and not by sight. A faith move. True story. It's the week before, the week of annual conference. I don't know if I'm coming back, y'all. It's the week of annual conference. I talked to Brother James. He and Marcus have been talking. And he said, I'm ready to attach. I'm ready to commit. I'm ready to do the work and become a member of Mount Olive. I said, hold up. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I knew he couldn't be here last week. He told me he and his wife were going to be out of town. But he said, I want to join. And I'm going to come when we get back in town. Walking by faith and not by sight. We all got to walk by faith and not by sight. And I thank you, Brother James McClendon, and I welcome you. Can Mount Olive give him a hand? I welcome you wholeheartedly to Mount Olive AME Church. And I thank God for the ministry that he's placed inside of you. Wife, can you come stand with him? Come on, my sister, just stand behind. I thank God for what he's placing in you. I thank God for the ministry that he's placing in you and what he's going to do through you. I thank God for what he's going to do within Mount Olive through you and through all of the men that are here. There's a work that God has called us to do. And it's going to take all of us working together to do this work that God has called us to do. And I thank God for you and for your ministry. And I thank God for restoration. I thank God for the brothers who come to, to lift you up, to be on each shoulder. Hallelujah, God. And I thank God for his restoration in your life. I thank God for you have cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord says, I will deliver and I will heal you. I have heard your cry. I have heard your moan. I have heard your pain. And God says, there is ministry in you and there is work for you to do in my kingdom. And you have been brought to this place for such a time as this to do the work that I have called you to do. I thank God for you. I praise God for you and the work that will be done. We thank you, God, and we praise you for all these things and so much more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can everybody shout hallelujah? us to do. And we thank you God for hearing our prayer. He writer us said he will hear our faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. 
Hallelujah. Let us stand to be dismissed on this morning. Now, God, as we go out to serve, as we go out to do the work that you've called us to do, walk with us, stand by us, let us know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Even in the roughest hours when we feel like we're alone and we want to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken us? Bring back to our remembrance that we're never alone. That you will fight our battle. All we got to do is cry out to you. Now I pray that you walk in peace and that you walk in power knowing that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Have a blessed week, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Amen? Amen.